Hi, hi, hi everyone. Lovely Hello. to see you. Hi. Um, welcome everyone. I can't tell you how happy and proud I am that this is the ninth Flix Festival. By proud, I'm proud for all of you lot because the standard is amazing how whether we have lockdown, COVID, whatever happens, you still produce work to an amazing standard and and it's great to get your work and it's great to see how different your work is, um, how you all approach it in different ways um, and just carry on being creative. It's, it's the joy of working at City Lit that we get to have contact with such amazing creativity. Hi, love. What can I do for you? I don't know yet, Donia. Need a bit more time? Yes, please. Take your time, love. And have a tea? No, thanks. OK, love. Well, I'll just be over there. Love, can I get you anything? No, Ta. You had anything? No. What's that? Tea. I'm hungry. Are you? Yeah. Fancy anything? Um... No. Why do we come here, eh? Yeah, oh, I don't know. Egg and chips? Ambience. Chit chat. Look at this. Look at her over there. We should eat her. I'll eat this spoon. Go on then. Nah. Where are you going? Have a look. Hi. Take your time, love. Bible, pincers, Russian salad, old leaves, pickle rolls, cold beans, burnt panini, soft crackers, grated onion in a dirty glass bowl. Just going out the back, love. I'll be back in a minute. I've got an idea. Hello, love. Can I help you? Yes. One orthopaedic shoe. That's all you left me. There's plenty of other stuff. 
Okay.
They know us, they take care of us. Often they are the first and the last people we see. Sometimes they know us more intimately than we know ourselves. And yet often we know very little about them. Who is the doctor behind the face mask? Who's the person behind the uniform? Right from the beginning, people have come from all over the world to work in the NHS. They've made its vision come true. Many were here already. They came from Ireland and from Central Europe. Some were refugees from Nazism, leaving everything they had behind them. Many more were recruited from Britain's former colonies. Nurses from the Caribbean, doctors from the Indian subcontinent and Africa. When there were staff shortages again and again, international workers answered the call. Some escaped war zones, some came in search of love, some for adventure or opportunity. They overcame great barriers. Many were told they weren't good enough. They should wait for their time or go back to where they came from. Some were sent to areas that British-born doctors and nurses didn't want to go, okay. to do jobs that others didn't want to do. Yet, they persisted as surgeons, nurses, family GPs, carers, cleaners, porters, caterers, researchers, caring for others, saving lives, and creating a life for themselves in Britain, falling in love, getting involved in their communities, having children, creating new generations following in their parents' footsteps, working on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic alongside colleagues from around the world. This is the story of the NHS. This is our story.
Can I get you anything? I can switch on the telly if you like. Are you going to give me the silent treatment all evening? I'm not mad about this set of either, but you heard what the psychologist man said about unhealthy attachments. I know what'll cheer you. Ta-da! It's your favorite. I know. Now don't go anywhere. You know what's coming. Your favorite. Okay, I'm going to make an exception tonight, but this is the last time, okay? Okay. And I suppose you want carrying over? inspiration for my film um I guess kind of stemmed quite a bit from the fact that um the I did the course um during one of the lockdowns and so I was kind of confined to the, the house mostly and trying to find kind of inspiration um from what was around me apart from apart from my housemate um uh, this fellow also had um a starring role um he lives in my room and my eyes alighted on him when I was trying to think of ideas for the film. Um, and I think I thought he would be good partly just because I think he, he's quite a sweet character, but also um, I thought it'd be interesting to kind of play around with the 
idea of um, silence and a silent character and how their silence can be both um, quite evocative and, and say as much as words can say. A big thing that I got from the course was um, like some basic skills. So it was the first film course that I've ever done. Um, so just learning um, kind of basics and like basic knowledge about um, lighting, shot composition. Um, we also did um, an introduction to Adobe Premiere. Um, those were all things that I, I'd never um, kind of learned about before. Um, but also, um, I think the fact that it wasn't just a kind of one-to-one -one course, there was a group of us doing it um, was um, really important um, because it's, I think, much more motivating to keep producing and keep working away at um, a film when you know that other people are doing it at the same time and that you're going to be able to show each other your work. Seeing your peers do really good and interesting things um, make kind of spurs you on or it spurs me on to to kind of try and emulate um them and what they're doing in my own work my inspiration was about four years ago i did a course at city lits it was experimental filmmaking with pete gomez and i did an art degree in the mid 90s but i hadn't made i hadn't found a way of making work outside of college for a good 20 years i did that course and it basically all started with a pot of marmite and a macro lens and then I, I kind of found my something that I could work with and I've been working with macro lenses and kind of substances if you like for the last four years um but yeah stage three with Lily like really pushed pushed forward um um it just I actually understood the editing process for the first time the little tweaks that you can do even frame by frame that which most people might not notice, but they, they would do on a kind of more subconscious level. Um, and it's such an incredible piece of music as well. So I'd, I'd, I'd um, started doing some kind of macro stuff. And then I did a transcendental meditation retreat with Carly Parody, who's the composer. And she saw some of that and that resonated with that. So, um, so that collaboration was there, but the stage three editing really brought it up to a completely do, um, new level. I did enjoy the course. I learned a lot. It was um, really kind of, everybody had such different projects and we all learned from each other. Some were more personal than others or, um, but the feedback was um, incredible. It was great to have a connection with people and to be able to push forward with creative stuff during such a difficult time.
Good morning, Carlos. Are you okay, Laura? <sighs> Try this. In a place a cool home, with his four walls, where I stay, where I can go home. Locked down, I aim my days with a silver fork, sitting on the wooden floor. Locked down. So what's for dinner today? I aim my forties with a pinch of salt. Locked down. One, two, three, four walls and a tin can of chopped tomato sauce. Lock down and I kick the can down the road before it's dinner time again in this place. I go home. Are you 14 to 24 and passionate about improving the mental health and well-being of young people? We're looking for your voice and experience to help shape our new young health programme to do just that. Together with AstraZeneca, we've been working for over 10 years to empower young people around the world to live healthier lives and create change in their communities. We want to bring this work closer to home. From April to September 2021, we want to work with you to make a real difference. You'll meet others who want to make change and join our global network of youth activists. You'll have the chance to speak out on the issues that matter to you and use your experiences to help us improve mental health and well-being across the UK. Interested? You could send us a short piece of writing, a video, a voice recording or even a piece of art. Get creative.
I enjoy my course because it's merging lots of different disciplines together, both um, printing and technical and video and sound. So the film, um, it was, we were on Zoom. So I was with Monica and I had about an hour before the end of the session to produce the film. And um, I already had the train sound recorded and I was looking around at home for something to do. I just saw a tap and I um, merged them together, edit it, and that's it really. I'd like to um, make more films, use filmmaking in my practice, because I've learned the fundamentals now of um, sound production, video production, and, and there's a good building block. The inspiration for the animation, um, The Rocking Chair, is uh, what's going on with uh, COVID that so many people now have an empty chair in their house or at the dining table. And um, I'm a bit obsessed with shadows. Uh, the fact that a shadow is your representation, but it's not, depending on the surface that it falls, the angle of the sun, it starts having its own power. The rocking chair uh, talks about losing a loved one. And that's something that I think a lot of us experienced, uh, whether personally or just hearing on the news endlessly, the number of people that had passed away that day um, affected us all. So we had a wonderful group of students that we still keep in touch with and meet up, uh, you know, whenever we can. And it um, uh, formed a community of animators and we ended up also everyone having developing a certain style or interest uh, the class introduced us to the different types of animation, but it really let you take the one that you prefer to a higher level and to develop it uh, into a project. It helped you make a transition from uh, something that was more of a hobby into something now that I do in all of my spare time whenever I can. It's the very first film I think I've ever made um, in foundation art and design. And I was just enjoying the medium. So for me, the inspiration, I suppose, was things that were right in front of me that I felt I could play with. So most of it's filmed in the alley behind City Lit. And it's just about bringing things together and in an interesting way and seeing what happens. I, golly, I, I feel like I've learned this incredible life lesson. It's been, aside from being one of the most enjoyable educational experiences of my life, um, it's taught me a huge amount about the gradual process of moving towards a sort of maybe an ill-defined goal, but what iteration and research and revisiting things can bring, that there's a huge amount can be achieved through these small steps, which aren't necessarily defined. It's, I feel like it's applicable quite widely. The film is basically, basically an autobiographical story about me moving from my origin country to the UK. And the inspiration was really based on that, something that's autobiographical, but at the same time has fiction. Not everything that happened there is true. <laughs> I wanted to do something very lighthearted and comedy and drama, and I chose to do hand draw because, well, I, I did also fine art course, and I thought I, I had to go more into drawing. And, the way the story went, I thought the hand draw was more uh, suitable because at first I wanted to do stop motion, but I thought the way the characters react so much in, more emotions than movement, I thought the hand draw would be more adequate. And it was great to learn all these techniques of animation, hand draw, stop motion, paper cut, computer, after effects. It was really brilliant, really helped me and the other students in the, the films. And also the third part, of course, the storyboard in discussion, I think it was really important too. Animation is a lot of work, especially to do hand draw, but it is worth it. Animation is tough, but the result is, is brilliant. <laughs> the inspiration for my film was we were looking at how um, you can connect um, sound and image, and sometimes you produce the sound before the image, sometimes you produce the image for, before the sound. Um, and one of my, my class members, uh, Lorena, she was doing something inspired by a computer game. And it got me thinking about computer games as well. And my film's kind of about agency and how in life, 
you you can't always affect the change that you'd like to but if you record something you can then control it and so by adding the computer game sounds to it as well um it's enabled me to affect some change in the world that I wouldn't be able to otherwise I got a lot from that course it was a really great uh, group of people um we 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 got a lot of in inspiration from one another um the the lecturer Monica was fantastic um she showed us a lot of various different films which were uh, again very inspirational and we learned lots and lots of different approaches and techniques for for looking at uh, film but not necessarily representational I found it the, probably the most inspirational um film course I've done anyway
and we're giving these to people as gifts. They're, um, it's, it's an art project. <laughs> Would you like one? <laughs> Hi there. I, uh, I'm right. uh, giving these to people. They're art. It's an art project. Um, oh, would you like? Would you like one? Like one? No, no, thank you. All right. Thank you anyway. Okay. Thank you so oh, much. pleasure. <laughs> I'm uh, doing okay. a, a project. I made these things out of clay that I got out of a skip from a neighbour's basement conversion. Do you mind if I just and, film uh, you doing that? And uh, I'm using the audio oh, as a background for a short movie, it's like an art project. Thing. So, uh, well, would, would you like one? Yeah. So I'm recording us talking. Oh, that's Aye, right. that's good. Cool, that's good. Cool. Thank you. Pleasure, pleasure. Uh, well, they're, they're sort of related to the fossils that were, were underneath London 50 million years ago when the clay was formed. It, we, there was a subtropical climate here, so there was a lot of fruit seeds and sort of uh, things like ferns and... Uh, th that's those ones. The, the rest of them, the, the little tiles, uh, the rest of them are not. They're just regular commercial clay. Um, okay. But you're very welcome to these rather experimental <laughs> ra rainbow pots. I'm giving these to people as an art part of an art project. Oh, uh, lovely! It's so, what, so I can choose any of these. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please, oh, please, please, please go ahead. Go on, say. Um, How's it been? Absolutely awful that it's that it's happened, obviously. Uh -huh. Um, but it's been a very creative time, and a very creative period, and I feel like a lot of people have um, resorted to creativity to be able to get around their troubles. God oh, bless. Oh, enjoy. Thank you very, very much. Cool. Have well, a lovely. I'll remember this forever. Excellent. <laughs> Good. <laughs> bye bye. And how did you find the lockdown? Awful. <laughs> yeah, didn't we all? Enough uh, is enough now. Oh boy. Oh yeah. I'm uh, giving these to people. It's a sort of thank you for everything you've been through during COVID. Uh, well, so yeah. I'm, uh, I'm a art student and uh, just making a little project about gifts and about what people have been through yeah, during the last year. Yeah, it's been a hard time, isn't it? Yeah, it's been tough, isn't it? Yeah. I had COVID. Did you? I did, yeah. I did too, yeah. It's not um, very nice, is it? No. When was that? I had it because, we, well, I, when, when the children, I sent the children back to school after the lockdown. After the first one? First one? Yeah. Right. Then they, they brought it back from school. Uh, but I got COPD, so I was in the category of high risk. Uh, and, but I've had both my jabs now, though. I'm on the men, but I'm suffering from long COVID. Oh, really? If there's such yeah. a thing. My mum had, yeah, no, there is. My mum had it. And, oh, she got a lot better after the first injection. Yeah. Which uh, a lot, yeah, lot of people brilliant. see. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like one of these? I, I made them. They're uh, made of clay out of a neighbour's skin. Yeah, I'd love to have one, mate. If yeah. you don't mind, I'll yeah. take it back to my children. Yeah. Indeed, please do. Thank you very, very much. God would, bless would you like one each? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll take one each. You've got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank, yes. thank you very, very much, Mike. Oh, well, pleasure. Good. How's your experience of the last year been? Um, so I work as a hairdresser normally, so I meet lots of different people all the time. Uh, so then it just obviously came to a real standstill, a real stop, um, which obviously was as much of a shock for me as it was for anybody because, you know, meeting so many people all the time and then not meeting anyone, it was yeah. just like, you know, a bit of a... A bit crazy on the mind, I guess. Do you think there's anything you'll miss? Because Monday, everything sort of goes back to normal, doesn't it? Yeah. Is there anything you'll miss about the whole um, thing? Assuming think, life does go back to normal. Yeah, well, that's it, isn't it? Everyone is saying, let's get back to normal, but how, norm how good was normal before? You know, there's <laughs> lots of things that, you know, for example, pollution and air quality and travel, you know, all those things came to a standstill and it, it, you know, very quickly showed that it was better for the planet, really. Yeah. So, you know, maybe that was the time to kind of look at all those things, but people just seem to be in a rush to get back, don't they, to what it was before. Yeah. To me, it seemed like a perfect time to reevaluate everything. Because some days when there was nothing to do, it, all, it was like a little taste of what retirement could be. <laughs> I do give to some charities anyway, but I gave more than I would normally to right. different things. Uh, sort of because of COVID? That, yes. Yeah, just thought, all right. Yeah. I did offer my services to cut hair, but I'm also diabetic and they wouldn't take me because of the risk. Right. I was doing, I offered, a couple of friends were doing hair for the homeless and stuff like that, but they wouldn't take oh, me. So the risk so, to you? Yes. All right. Uh, how, how has your uh, last year or so been? 
tough. Tough, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a nurse, so yes, tough. Uh, so working throughout? Or? Yes, working throughout, and um, I'm glad it's all calmed down a little bit now. Well, for me anyway, the uh, the stress was so unexpected in ways, in as much as, you know, even being on furlough, the, the, the concept of psychologically not having any control, getting money for nothing would have previously been fantastic. But getting money for nothing without having any control over your destiny is was such, such an unusual thing. I'd have much preferred further not to exist and to have not got money for X amount of months and then known that I had my job back rather than get money for nothing all year and still maybe never have a job back. Um, in being given the money, then um, it was okay to be given no other answers from the employer. So you're just being given money for and you have no guarantee that your your that my control my control was to, to to be a good employee to ensure I keep my job was taken away from me. Right. So I found that very stressful. But because we've not lived through anything like this before, I think what what I noticed is that some people when they get low need to be on their own. And some people when they get low need to be around people that are close to them. And it all turned on its head who those people were or weren't in my life. So people that I thought that I was very close with. I think the thing is is that for some people, when they are very low, being around people that are close to them means that their sadness is being seen and they don't want their sadness to be seen. Yeah. So I found that certainly a few of my friends, when they got low, they needed to be around people that they didn't know and so made big changes, moved to different places to be, um, you know, moved to different cities. What? Yeah, I work in a primary school. And I'm Royal Mail. Royal Mail. So, yeah, so it got yeah. very busy for us. Ah, OK. Everybody started shopping at home, so it all came through our work, and it's just it's been very busy. So all the so work changed a lot, uh -huh. but I was still there. <laughs> right. I still kept going. Uh -huh. And then these two, you kept going to school, didn't you? You kept going in going in every day it was quite nice because they had really small classes and oh they, because you were there and because i was at work they had they, to go, they had into, to go school. into school right how the man what lockdown meant for you yeah how was it good good what did, what what was what was different from normal um isolating yeah and why was that good um because um i didn't really like school <laughs> <laughs> me and daddy are both key workers aren't we we pretty much carried on as normal, didn't we? Yeah. School most days. Right. It's just done, we've just done a 10 day isolation. Uh -huh. That's why you mentioned an isolation. It's the first one we've done. So. All right. Uh, <laughs> you'd you like that one? Oh, good. I'm glad you're taking one of those pots. Can you ask why? <laughs> why is nobody taking the pot? <laughs> not, so, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just take it all the way back to Harrogate with us, shall we? All right. We're just not here today. So. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for stopping. No, thank you. And, thank you. and for working through COVID. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> good. Thank you so much. Well, we're grateful, really, aren't we? We're, yeah. Especially, I've seen a lot of people that have... Life's changed, not necessarily for the better. So we were just grateful to carry on working and nothing changed. So we were grateful for that end, really. Thanks. Those are good questions. In the last 12 months. COVID killed my mum, so that's... Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. How old was your mum? She was 81, but a very young lady. Oh, well, I hope one of these will cheer you up. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, oh, they're lovely. So you've actually made these? Haven't you? Yeah, they. Um, I threw them on the wheel. Uh, obviously, rainbow. Yeah, they're lovely. Rainbow idea. In particular. Oh, please, we'll take it. Rainbow is very, very um, significant to me. Oh, good. My niece died. She was only five. Um, oh my goodness. And she loved rainbows and so like her funeral was all about rainbows and on the, on the day which was two days before Christmas we had rainbows in the sky and her funeral oh. they just appeared so oh. it's amazing so rainbows were quite special to me oh, <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't Covid related as no, well. that was, no that was, no, that was uh, about five years ago but she was oh. only five so um, oh goodness yeah, but it was just amazing because you know and rainbows are very special and it would be a birthday on Saturday it would be a birthday on Saturday she'd be 11 oh yeah. oh that's sweet Oh, good. Well, thank you for thank you for thank you for stopping and yeah, sharing that with me. And, uh, no, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. All the best for the future. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh -huh. uh, we lost the majority of our income, but we managed to survive uh -huh. anyway. Um, Otto stopped going from school, and it made us realise, you 
people seem much happier not in school, so we're now home educating. That was quite a gift, wasn't that it? Was quite Realising that we could have yeah. to go to school. He's been anti screen and suddenly he was faced with looking at a screen for six hours a day, which uh -huh. he refused to do because of what we've always told him. So it was kind of, it bit us back, you know, so uh -huh. it was fair enough, really. I think I'm quite introverted, so I quite enjoyed the excuse not to, to go out to you. I'm to be honest. It probably sounds awkward. No, no. I was on sabbatical last way. spring when in <laughs> Europe, when yeah, everything started shutting down, so yeah. I had to come here. I thought it was for a few months, but I'm here like a year and a half later. Right. In the meantime, I met someone and we bought a house together. And yeah, I mean, I think it was really good because I, I think just like even the possibility of meeting someone just was like everything else, like all the noise stopping and everything stopping that you just sort of slow down and things that you don't see otherwise or like when you're too busy and rushing around within yourself as well like sorting things out Great. life life things ah, good but that's so. like i think it comes from being quiet you've been working all the way through lockdown on yeah cleaning the street yeah good well thank you for cleaning the streets and keeping london thank you very much. keeping london thank clean you. Thank you. Have a nice day. What's the birthday cake? Put it in the caterpillar. Uh, okay. Here you go. You're giving me a, a piece, of, the piece of cake. Thank it you is. very much. In return for a look. Which one? Should, which one should I take? Well, whichever one you like best. I mean, uh, my lockdown's been pretty good since the beginning. Eh? Well, just generally anything big change yeah, in your I life. I got a job the other week. I'm oh. a waitress now. Oh, fantastic! Well done. Thank so, you. Uh, so things are opening up again with yeah. uh, people are employed. When I'm not at work, I just enjoy um, walking my dog and you uh -huh. know the sunshine today, and just nature to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, and it definitely helps having a dog because you know a dog doesn't know what's going on in the world, and when your dog just greets you in the morning and is so happy, it's just you know it's fantastic. It cheers you on uh, for the day, and we usually go even before work. We do a half an hour walk, and um, it's the best thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I think it's been quite a mixed bag, hasn't it? It's been hard not seeing people and things. Yeah, um, I lost my job in the middle of it, but oh. now I'm the site manager oh, of a vaccine centre. Oh, fantastic. So that's really fun. Yeah, I started as a volunteer, um, and now, yeah, I work there. Um, so that's really good. It's oh, really good seeing everyone coming in to get their vaccine. Everyone's, like, quite excited, so it's a nice place to be, and it's filled with volunteers who are also, like, giving something back. So it's really, really good that it's really, now got a bit sense of community coming out of it so I feel like yeah we're coming out the other side again. I think I'll miss like maybe how sort of we've been able to slow down a bit like things aren't as hectic like you're not like rushing out to work then rushing to like do an activity and rushing to like, go to dinner you're not really doing anything you're sort of appreciating more of the nature you know when you could only go on walks and things you started noticing like different smells and different colours and things that you would yeah, yeah. normally stop to appreciate I feel like things like that we need to The inspiration, well, the the subject is, um, it's a song I wrote for my band, The Rude Mechanicals, a while back. Um, and I just thought, I thought very foolishly that it would be easy to make a little um, sculpture and then animate it dancing. And I thought, yeah, I can do that, no problem. <laughs> um, uh, this turned out, I, I was very, very wrong. Um, but I learned a hell of a lot of stuff. Um, and it was it was fantastic. So I'm I'm very pleased with it. I got loads out of it. I got to know all sorts of things I didn't I didn't know before, um, and and how to do stop motion animation using clay clay puppet. Um, it was it was absolutely fabulous. So the the inspiration for the film was after I'd done the uh, I I um, I got to. to I, um, I was looking around for a piece of music for another film we're, we're making and I found this um, Baroque piece and I thought, oh, that it's sort of like quite an airy um, uh, piece. And, and um, I thought perhaps I could put something together. So I was thinking of a story I could, I could put to the, the music. And I thought about birds because I like birds. They're in my garden and I was thinking of it. And then I, I thought about other other methods of, of flight and all 
it sort of all came together so that I could think of what's good about flying and what's bad about flying and, and how it I can create something that makes a bit of sense, I suppose. No, I, I did Lily's editor uh, Premiere Pro um, 1 and 2, level 1 and level 2 courses, and I found it really inspiring because I've never done anything like that before in my life. So um, I've been on several writing courses at City Lit and always found them really good. Um, and I sort of got into filming via my daughter, who's a filmmaker, so she sort of wants a hand with editing. So I sort of got on it on the course by accident, really, or not not by my, you know, I just thought, oh yeah, that's a good idea, because I've just retired. And ever since then, I've, I've it's taken over my life, and I, I love it. I don't know why I didn't do it years ago. The second animation that I've done presenting is uh, Haunted by My Shadow and that is again looking at shadows and in this case though I don't overtly say it it's um, it talks about mental illness and that mental illness is a, the feeling of being haunted by your own shadow that you don't know who controls you you control your shadow or you're, or you're following your shadow or um, uh, you dictate what your shadow does and that kind of stress of this inner struggle um, it's like having someone that you're constantly fighting with. Um, I did the uh, two um, one-year courses, the first, which was the introduction to the animation and then the professional practice course. And the professional practice course, I thought was uh, wonderful to introduce us to networks, to introduce us to the process of how um, an animation is carried out and to make uh, it seem very much as a real uh, process that you could carry out. Edmund de Waal was an inspiration that he was talking about experiencing during lockdown. He said that he wanted to return to making simple pots and to the idea of touch and handling things and, you know, passing them between us because something we hadn't been allowed to do, you know, it was all, you know, keep your hands clean, don't touch, don't interact, don't. So I was thinking, well, creating moments, he, he said something about that, the, the act of passing ceramics between hands was uh an important element for him and that kind of is can be seen in the film the idea evolved uh with input from others uh, around the idea of um, generosity in art and the whole sort of gift economy and but also thinking about the time when i would be making the film it was part of a uh, fine art and design course which ended up spanning over two years really and we knew i knew i'd be filming at the time when lockdown was at the, the third lockdown was ending and therefore people would be keen to talk and the weather would be good, it would be summer and I wanted to be outside. And, you know, they were, I, they, it was clear there would be a, an eagerness for people to talk about their experiences, what they'd been through. And so I set about creating these little moments where people could feel that they could open up and, and it worked better than I expected, which is great. I studied uh, the Foundation Diploma in Art and Design, which was a five term course for three days a week. Uh, and it actually ended up spanning two full years in the end with, there was one uh, you know, due to COVID and the way it worked, panned out. And it was great. It was fantastic. It was, um, yeah, it's a quite a in-depth kind of training in how art is made. I mean, within that, there was incredible freedom to, do all sorts of different things and everyone did something completely different, but the, the kind of core basis of how you set about thinking about art and making it and the, the, the research, the experimentation, the play, the exploring and then refinement and feedback and just the whole process was, you know, made clear and you did it repeatedly. And by the end you sort of started feeling, you know, I can do this. <laughs>